Hello everybody and welcome once again to another one of my videos. My name is Chris and this is Barnon 11970. Let's sit back, relax and listen to a couple of things and hopefully you guys will help continue your liking, sharing and commenting so we can get this dialogue further and further out there to wake up more and more people. Now, from the 5 plus years of me researching this stuff, You'll find there's a lot of misinformation, a lot of information you thought was true ends up being false, a lot of things that you thought were false end up being true. It's such a, a scramble. I can understand how a lot of people get frustrated or some don't even want to believe it because you'll hit dead end after dead end. But if you know anything about a maze, you'll eventually find the exit if you don't give up. But expect a lot of dead ends, wrong turns, backtracking. That's going to happen. Now, one of the things I want to clear up is one of the biggest misconceptions as far as being a corporate owned entity is that your name has to be in capital letters. Now, that is accurate, but not 100% true. This is the game. The game is if you have marked a box that says, are you a U.S. citizen? You automatically have your name registered. Now, if you know anything about your parents, they're going to have your birth certificate. They're going to mark that box. So right off the bat, before you even have the, the ability to even know who you are, or what you are, you've already been labeled as a corporation. So our parents, unfortunately, because they were not given full disclosure of what they were signing, because basically, if they were about to, you know, they went to a hospital, they just had the baby. And the doctor comes up to you and says, okay, here, here's a form we want you to sign. And if you sign it, what's going to happen is you're going to give us permission to make a corporate account of your child. We'll extract their DNA, which proves who they are. So we could borrow money against them for the rest of their lives, which basically leaves them, you know, in poverty, in debt. And basically they become a corporation and be pronounced legally dead. Sign here. How many parents do you think would have signed that? So with all contracts, it does boil down to full disclosure. Now, the way they get away with it is because no one contests it, because how do you contest something you don't know about? So whether your name is in all capital letters, partial capital letters, if you have any form of government ID, whether it be a birth certificate or a driver's license, or you even registered to vote, you are part of the District of Columbia, the corporation known as the United States. Now, different laws have changed, so people can say things like, oh, the certain act of 1871 you know, was changed, and that can be true. But make no mistake, there are still laws up to this day, like I showed in the video I made the other day, the U.S. Code that proves that Washington, D.C. is a corporation. So if you are part of that corporation, known as a citizen, because you don't understand the legal limbo, lingo, ignorance of the law is no excuse. So what we need to do is, see, a lot of this stuff is meant to be scary and strange, and that's the way to keep people away. But what I'm trying to do is keep it very simple so the average person on the street could sit here and say, all right, this makes sense. Let me verify it. Let me check into it. So after 1933, when our country could not pay back all the loans that it had, and it doesn't matter between 1871 and 1933 what laws could have changed because they were basically trying to cover their tracks. Ultimately, the country went bankrupt. Now, as you could see to this day, we don't have a lot of things that we can use as collateral. But as you notice in 1933, that's the year they, they took the gold from the people. Now, isn't that just a coincidence that they needed to pay back all their debts they didn't have anything really that they can give except for gold, which does have monetary value, despite what some haters or people that don't understand it have. And if you ever notice ever since, I mean, you go back to like the 1940s, I believe, or at least the 50s, the uh, Fort Knox hasn't been audited, even though there is a law that states they're supposed to be audited every year. Well, our money is supposedly backed by gold. At least that's what they tell you, that Fort Knox is filled with gold. Well, no, all that gold got transferred from here in Fort Knox or wherever they were holding it to the holdings of the Bank of London over in England, which is the people who own Washington, D.C. So 
I understand that people want to know what's going on and I don't know everything. And a matter of fact, unless you're in, you know, the evil rooms that discuss these things, you're never going to really know everything, but it's like making a puzzle. You don't need 100% of the pieces to start formulating a picture. So as far as anybody knowing 100%, I seriously doubt anybody does because I'm sure even people in the quote unquote know only are privileged to certain information. That's how you keep things from ever, you know, forming a full picture. But if you have a puzzle with a thousand pieces and you have 500 of them already up, you could pretty much tell what the picture is going to be. It doesn't have to be complete. Would it be nice? Yes. So when it comes to your birth certificate, it's what is it, they basically, like I've said in other um, videos, it all comes down to language and it also comes down to deciphering code. Now, sometimes it's not the actual word, but it's meaning or an older meaning. Like, for example, if you look up the word bless in olden days, and you can look this up in Bible research, the word bless also means to curse. So it always makes you wonder when you look at money or you hear a government official say, you know, God bless this people or God bless the citizens, they usually like to say, or God bless America. Well, which bless do they mean? The same thing with so many different words, that there are legal definitions that are different in court. So whether you understand them or believe them is irrelevant. When it comes to court, that's why they you pay a lawyer to defend you most of the time. It's because they understand the lingo. Now, unfortunately, they get paid whether you win or lose, and they're part of the system whether they know it or not. We have to get to the average person out there. Because if you look at your ID, see basically what happens is when you're born and they extract your DNA, they are extracting proof of who you are because nothing else can prove who you are other than your DNA because each person's DNA strand is one of a kind, at least as far as we know of. Now, when it comes to driver's licenses, IDs, they can be faked or forged. Your signature, you can, somebody could forge that as well, but you can't copy somebody's DNA. Each strand is an individual. So when you're born, they extract that from you. So they claim it. And because you abandon it, basically, because you don't know and you're not informed, they claim ownership. It's like anything. If you abandon it, it's yours. I mean, if you're getting your fingernails cut, at a salon, at a nail salon, and they trim your fingernails, you don't take the fingernails with you, you leave them behind. So it's abandoned property, even though it's you. Now, you could have DNA strands in your nail clippings. You could have scratched your hair and a hair got caught in there. Your DNA is all over it. But regardless of that, if the person decides, you know what, I'm gonna take these fingernail clippings and sell them, well, they have the right to do it because you abandoned that property, even though it once belonged to you. So that's where it comes down to. It comes down to claiming ownership. And because we don't know of these things and we weren't given the full disclosure, which basically voids and contracts the, the law itself, but no one says anything about it. That's why it continues. And that's what I mean about how easily this can be changed because we don't have to start a war. It doesn't have to be a revolution. This is not about get your, you know, get your guns and go kill people. You don't need to fire one shot. All you have to do is handle it the right way. If the majority of the people, the masses of the people no longer consented and basically, you know, called their bluff, this would change in an instant without fighting because it's due to the consent of the governed. And if you don't complain about something, it's the same as consenting because if you're in an abusive relationship, and one party is hitting the other, and I'm not saying it's always men in, against women, it could be the other way, but it doesn't matter. If you're being beaten, is it wrong? Absolutely. Should the person be punished? Absolutely. If you never report it, will anything happen? No. So that's almost the same as agreeing with it because you're not stopping it. Now I know, you know, that could get a little, you know, touchy, but still, it's that's what happens. If the person would have went to the police, this would never have happened. You know what I mean? Like that whole cartoon thing. So when it comes to law, if you do not 
disagree and argue it and you just say nothing, it's the same as agreeing. So that's why you never learn about these things in school. You never learn these things in the media because think of it this way. Who is responsible for what can and cannot be said in, in the media? Well, isn't that the FCC that's controlled by the government? Who can and is, or, um, is responsible for what can and cannot be said in schools? Well, the government regulates that as well. So politicians are not going to tell you these things because they get paid very well or they know that they might accidentally have some deadly accident or some drug overdose or they just happen to commit suicide if you say the, if you say the wrong things. But if you don't, you and your family are paid very well and you're taken care of. So, I mean, think of it as yourself. I mean, if you were about to become president, which you can't because you're not part of the family, you have to be related and you have to go to Yale, Harvard, Princeton and be part of the quote unquote club. But let's just say for miracle's sake, you got in somehow. They're basically, you're going to have two choices. Well, you can follow along with what we tell you because laws are based on money. I don't care who's in control. Whoever has the money creates the laws or prevents laws from happening. So if you think a politician has real ultimate power, uh, you're just not paying attention. But if they told you, okay, you can play ball and do what we tell you and you'll get paid very well. You'll live a very lavish lifestyle. And if you don't, let's show you a couple of videos or movie clips that no one else has ever seen. Uh, you know, a lot of people say, oh, oh, well, you know, I would do it. Well, what if they say that also with your family? You know, that's where they get you. So it's easy to control it. But again, it all has to do with their ultimate fear. They're afraid of us finding this out. That's why they send trolls to channels like this all over the internet to humiliate the people and make people stay away from and say, oh, that person's crazy. And for a while, it does work because, you know, you think these are normal, rational, everyday people until you understand no rational person for five plus years would continually attack you personally just because they didn't like you. Because that's one hell of a sad, pathetic life if they spent five years of their life dedicating every day to one individual. That's kind of ins the true definition of insanity. So they get paid. Now, now, obviously not all of them, but there are people who get paid. So this way, the average person will come here or to somebody else's video and say, oh, that person's an Illuminati shill or that person is a lizard man or that person is on drugs or that person wears tinfoil hats or that person hasn't paid his taxes since 1962 when they don't focus on the situations of why. So they will use emotions to make other people stay away. And that's why numerous channels talk about this stuff every day. And the, the majority of people would rather watch the Super Bowl, would rather hear the latest Hollywood gossip, would rather turn on Fox or MSNBC and hear the, you know, the programming. There's a reason why it's called a television and you're being programmed through television programming. But people like that because they get those few carrots. They live an okay lifestyle. Some live a very lavish lifestyle and they don't want to quote unquote rock the boat kicking the can down the road. That's what our forefathers did. And this has been going on way before the, the quote-unquote civil war, which I always find funny because please explain to me what's civil about a war. You know, they try and glorify it. I mean, I remember from the age of like 12 till the age of, you know, the mid to late 20s, I was obsessed with World War II. I was fascinated with it. And they glorify it. Well, isn't that the true definition of, you know, propaganda? Please explain to me what's passionate about war when one person is killing another person and the only reason they're killing each other is because they're told that they hate each other based on the very governments that sit back and, and count all of the money they're getting playing their nice game of human chess. Because that's what it all boils down to. You have governments that are attacking other governments by using its people, its citizens, as pawns, and they profit off of it. They borrow the money from banks. The banks give them the money. We pay it back. It's the biggest scam in the world, and we, we applaud these people. Every time there's a new governor, a new mayor, a new president, new king, new queen, depending on where you live, we applaud them, and they're loving it. They're sitting there collecting 
and counting our money as we speak. And we get poorer and poorer, sicker and sicker, fatter and fatter, depressed, more depressed and more depressed. And yet for some reason, we justify it by saying, oh, well, you know, it's not that bad. Well, that's what people have said throughout history until eventually it becomes so bad. Now they lost everything. The idea is to not let that vicious cycle repeat for the millionth time. So either people stay complacent, just do nothing, or we spread this information. So I, I try and keep this as simple as possible for people. If you have a birth certificate, you are part of a corporation. doesn't matter if you live in the United States corporation or if you live in the Australian corporation or the Canadian corporation or any of the other corporations. It's part of a bigger picture. They use divide and conquer. That's why you'll have nations hating nations, religions hating religions, colors of different types of people hating other colored different types of people, sexual preferences, states, baseball teams. There's an infinite amount of ways. I mean, just look at here in New York. When I used to love the Yankees, we used to hate people that were Mets, and we used to really hate people that were Red Sox fans. And some people would actually fight each other over the fact that they had a different colored hat on their head. It's a gang mentality, colors. And people would want to hurt each other over sports. Just imagine what they do over sexual preferences or religion. How many millions of people have died because the invisible God that they pray to is better than the invisible God somebody else prays to? I mean, just look at our supposed freedom of speech. People may not like what I say. They may not even agree with it, but I have the right to say it. But some people feel the need to have to try and attack me or others just because they have a difference of opinion. And they'll take, you could get 90% of the things right. You get 10% wrong. They'll always focus on the 10% wrong. Well, I would love to point out any person that's 100% right 100% of the time. I'd sure love to meet that person because that would be the true leader. So this is what it boils down to. You are all part of the system until we all decide we no longer want to be in the system. You want to learn the easiest way what this is all about? Go watch Disney's ants and change the grasshoppers to the government and the ants to the people. And I've shown examples of that in previous videos. So check that out. So I'm going to leave it from here. I would love to hear what you have to say. I really hope that you guys will create a dialogue amongst yourselves, talk with each other, share this with people who you want to wake up. You know, it doesn't have to be about lizard men. It doesn't have to be about satanic cults. A lot of that stuff is to get you off track, to scare you. And remember, in an infinite universe, there are infinite possibilities. Your truth creates your truth. Your belief system will create your own truth. So whatever you believe could ultimately be true, even if it's different from somebody else's truth. So if you're going to create and have the ability to create your own truth, you might as well make it something that doesn't scare the living daylights out of you. So show this with a friend. Get the dialogue going. Talk to people rationally, because the more we use emotion in our conversation, and trust me, it took me years to learn this, the more we put our emotion into things, the more defensive people get. If we talk rational to straight to the point, for newer people, at least you can get them through the door. And that's why I try and keep these as simple as possible, because I've learned, especially in the beginning for me, with all the misinformation, with all the alternative information, with all the confusing information, the more complicated they made it, the harder it was for me to understand and the more I didn't want to care. Because how are you going to, if you drop a, a physics book on the ground of a high school uh, dropout, how are they going to have an incentive? They open that book, they're going to have no idea what's going on. Just imagine taking that book and giving it to a kindergartner who barely could speak English. You have to take things a step at a time. If you were to tell a kindergartner, okay, here, learn quantum mechanics, here's the book, they're going to look at that stuff, think it's just gibberish, and say, you know what, I can't learn this, and they give up. That's the same thing with about with the truth, the quote-unquote truth, the illusion of truth or the perception of truth. 
if you just drop a whole bunch of bombs on people and they have no idea what's going on, they're going to automatically dismiss it. Their, their intellectual brain will shut off and their reptilian brain of fight or flight is going to come into effect. That's why people a lot of times just automatically shut down and they don't want to hear it because it's just overwhelming for them and their brain says, all right, I have to run away. But in this day and age, it's not monsters they're running away from or animals, it's words. So let's keep it basic. And then once they get the curiosity and they get some of the basic understanding, then they could start seeing it on a more rational level. So I think that's where I made the mistake on my longer videos back in the days is people like you and I who are watching this and know this stuff will hear that stuff and say, oh, yeah, that makes sense. Somebody that's never heard this stuff before, they're going to automatically dismiss it. So I'm trying to keep it a little bit simpler now. So once they get the basics, they can go and see those other parts and go from there. So that's it. I hope you guys appreciate what I try and do. Please share it if you can. Post it on your social networks. Let's hear your comments. Create a dialogue. And uh, let's get this movement going in the right direction. So thanks for watching, guys. And I'll check you out next week.